Well, I must say the CCA workbench has an aroma. Yeah, you can call me Stinky. <laughs> stinky. Aromatherapy going on over here at the CCA workbench. Well, Dave, we're mango talking about snapper. mango snapper. Well, you know, mango snapper, they're called a lot of different things. And, you know, up in the up in the panhandle, they're called black snappers and gray snappers. And we call them mango snappers down here in South Florida because they like to associate around mangrove shorelines a lot. Any place where there's a nice current, you know, you put you out a chum bag and you can catch a lot of those little inshore snappers. And when you're fishing for those little inshore snappers, they're probably anywhere between uh, half a pound, maybe up to four pounds if you're lucky, if you, you find a nice bridge inshore someplace. I've right. had some big ones on them. As a matter of fact, right now up in Pat Deneen's area, me and my brother like to fish in the summertime on the Mid-Bay Bridge is a great place to catch some big mangrove snappers oh. in the summertime. Cool. And what we'll do up there is we'll get like a bucktail jig and some pilchards, mm -hmm. and we'll put a live pilchard on a bucktail jig and drop it to the bottom. Now how do you hook it? I hook him right through the nose. Okay. And you know, it's a little sideways and doesn't look that great all the time going down. But when he gets down there on the bottom and he's doing this on that jig head, he yeah. comes and eats him. And you just gotta let him go and let him go and let him go. What do you mean let him go now? You gotta let him go for a little while. You can't, you can't Leave just- Leave the bail open. Yeah, you gotta let, yeah, feed him. Yeah. Drop back. Drop back. Let him have it. Because if you start to wind real quick, <laughs> he'll, he'll you'll just get the thing back. Because he'll he, what he'll do is he'll grab a hold of it and run away, just like a dolphin will or something. Because usually if there's one mangrove snapper, there's more. Right. And he's greedy and he grabs it and he'll run away with it before he swallows it. You know, chewing on it. And they got some nasty sharp teeth on them too. So you got to watch out. You know, go as low as you can in your leader, but you got to watch out because if you get too low, a, a mangrove snapper can snap you off if you yes, get sir. under 20 pound test. But I also like when I'm inshore um, around inlets and stuff like that, rocky shorelines, a gotcha. A gotcha. A gotcha gets them every time. <laughs> I mean, they love that thing because it looks like a little silver side. Yeah. You know, you, you're working that thing real fast and jerking it sh sharp. They don't even get a good look at it. They just, a, re a reaction strike. And so that that's a great little bait. Any kind of uh, Mirrodine or any bucktail jig, works great inshore when you're trying to catch the little ones this one there right here though the fish finder with a, <laughs> with a live shrimp that's a dead shrimp obviously right but uh if, when you put a live shrimp on a fish finder rig that's a great great snapper for not only mangroves but for yellowtails and any other little snappers down there now when you go offshore when you're targeting these big snappers like my buddy Cy Pazam does up in Cape Canaveral, he likes to fish for them at night. For one thing, you know, mangrove snappers are very wary fish. They have very good eyesight. So at nighttime, you don't have to worry so much about going really, really low on your leader. You can use a bigger leader and get away with it. And that allows you to catch a lot of the other fish that you might hook up when you're fishing for those big mangrove snappers because you're going to have the grouper and big red snappers down there too. So you don't want to go so light that you lose those fish just to catch the mangroves. But right now, just like uh, our boy was saying up there in Jacksonville, now is the time to be starting to go out there, uh, finding those wrecks in you know, 90, 200 feet of water, anything with a lot of bait on it, at nighttime is gonna be your best time. And first off, you know, a regular old knocker rig is, is, is one of your best shots. This is a knocker rig right here. And what that is, it just lets <coughs> the weight knock up against the hook. Right. You know, you use about a five or six foot of 80 to 100 pound test mono. I think this is 80 and a nice two or three aught circle hook and put that right down on the bottom. And when he picks it up again, let him go with it. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. And then let him go a little bit more and then start to wind and wind and wind and wind and wind and wind. Don't stop winding and then you'll get a hook up. The other also, rig? <clears throat> yep, regular old chicken rig I made right here. Watch out there. Chicken rig. Chicken rig, you know, just a, a regular snapper Ooh. rig too. Oh, oh we got this. everything. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, Dave, we gotta go. But no, you can use squid, uh, pilchards. Yeah. Anything that you catch right where you're fishing is also a very good bait. 